What's up guys? Welcome to your daily dose of brood war today. We have a very special video. Yeah, that's right We have a tournament a tournament here for you guys today. It's called the NSM the North America Starcraft Masters League that was sent to me by Artosis himself. He's going to be the organizer. He's also going to be playing in the tournament too. We did group A and group B on stream today and I have the highlights for you here in this video. So check them out. Watch the video. Make sure you stop by the stream as well tomorrow. We're going to be continuing with group C and group D. The rest of the tournament is going to be cast by Artosis himself. This Tournament has been sponsored by Mooney, who put up a thousand dollars towards that prize pool. So a great opportunity for these awesome North American players. So many people that you've seen that you maybe have watched on stream. So many great names. It's a big opportunity for us as casters and also for the players in NA to showcase their skills, to earn some money for their talents. It was a ton of fun. We even got Shun in there, guys. So make sure to drop by for the next stream. It's going to be tomorrow. That's Sunday, about 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time about 12 hours from when this video drops. So stop by the stream, support NA StarCraft. Brood War is still alive and well, and we are here to prove it, guys. See you there. Game three here between JY in the top left-hand corner and Raz in the bottom right. Losers pick the map. So we've got JY choosing this map here, Dark Origin. Should be a cheeky map. I mean, two-player maps are always a little bit funny in PvP. Oh, absolutely. But you've got this, like, this back door that's blocked by the mineral that you can exploit. I mean, there's all kinds of shenanigans and proxy gate spots. So who knows what's going to happen in this game. It looks like both players are going to be electing to build the gateways inside their main bases. So that's one thing we can rule out. Yeah, at least we're not going to see proxy gateways out in the middle of the map or anything. But we can't rule out another two gate. I, I feel like maybe the two gate was like a, a comfort play for JY. They didn't seem like he really knew maybe. the map, um, a Citadel too well. He kind of placed his gateways in a funny location. He didn't really know where the entrance to his base was, I think. And he just kind of yeah. fell back onto the, the two gate play. But here he's just going to go one gate, I think, as is Raz. And we're going to be uh, having more of a normal game, I guess. I think this map is really good for doing uh, one base reaver into expansion. Um, I imagine at least one of these players is going to do that. Maybe both. Hmm. I, I, it remains to be seen. But yeah, the, the one the one gate into reaver, slowly take your expansion where playing this map seems to be quite common. All right, we're going to get Cybernetta score for either player. Either player. I'm gonna skip the zealot for now. Let's see if they make zealot. Okay. We get the zealot for JY and the zealot for Raz. So both players aware that proxy pylons can come down. So to block this, you do need that zealot for the defense. Trying to get some damage here on the working probes at the at the gas and doing the same on the other side of the map here. Everything's been spotted. We see two pylons for both players. We know that there's nothing hidden out on the map right now and just going to run around in the main base for for the, the time being here. Not really any point in throwing down a, a proxy pylon at this uh, moment here. Instead, both players are just going to pop out their Dragoon and try to keep their probe alive in the opponent's base as, for as long as possible. Get that information, yeah. not allow a robo or anything to come down before the... Um, probe is killed. You don't want to reveal your tech here, and I don't think either player is going to do that. No, we got exactly. We got a mirror. We got a mirror matchup, a mirror build order, and even like a mirror playstyle for the time being. There'll be some small deviations the longer the game goes on. But right now, both players were completely mirrored until now. Raz not building a probe, and uh, JY building a probe a little bit earlier than him. So. Yeah, slight deviations will start to transpire as they either aren't as good at optimizing or get distracted by something or what have you. So we'll start to see the game like branch out a little bit here. But so far, both players are pretty much identical. Raz doing a great job of keeping this probe alive. Finally getting that caught. 
he was able to throw down, you know, his choice of tech here immediately and really JY wasn't able to do that for quite some time. He does go for the Robo. It's going to be two gate for Raz. Is this just going to be two gate right into Nexus, do you think? Or are we going to see a third gateway thrown down? Are we going to see some tech after this uh, two gate? What's going to happen here? It, I think it might be a three gate again. Let's see. Robo. Oh, okay. Okay. Two gate Robo. I, I like this more. I like the small. Yeah, two gate Robo is better than three gate here. And um, I really like the one gate Robo out of JY. I think it's the best play on this map. I think we're going to see exactly what you're talking about. One gate Robo into expansion from JY. And that's going to give him a faster expansion than what we're going to see out of Raz. He's, he could rest on production on one of these gateways and get the Nexus out a little bit faster. He's still going to be behind where JY is. Uh, on that nexus timing i don't think he's gonna be able to put on much pressure either this um i think this is a build order win for jy as long as he doesn't make any mistakes one thing i'd really like to point out though is the scouting probe only saw three goons and one zealot which is actually one gate production worth of units so he can't figure out that that's two gateways from what he just saw with that probe so he, mm. for, as far as he knows it's mirror build still so there is a small window that maybe raz can punish him a little bit because he didn't anticipate there being that many dragoons at some point in this game but yeah that's one thing to say is that right now jy might be of the understanding that this is only one gate tech right Well, I don't think this is, uh, when I said a build order win earlier, I'm not saying that it's, uh, that, uh, JY is just going to straight up win. It's just that he's going to get a slight advantage here. See the Nexus coming down a lot faster. He's got a nice defensive position here and he can start the Reaver as soon as this Observer is done. Walk it down the ramp and he's going to be feeling very nice and cozy here in his natural. Whereas Raz, I guess he's going to come across maybe? Is he going to try and attack in now? He's going to get spotted here. The Observer's coming over. I'm going to see this. Reaver is on the way. Is yeah, it going to be here in time? Here. There is a little window, there's yeah. Window, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can he actually break through the natural oh. before oh, that JY Reaver's out? Was... Oh, he cancels. JY thought he was safe. <gasps> yeah, yeah, JY thought he was safe. He, I told you, he only saw one gate worth of units. He assumed mm. it was one gate tech, so now he makes a mistake, and now he's in trouble. Oh, this is unfortunate. Having to return to the high ground here. He's going to add on two gateways with that money that he got from canceling Nexus. And try to uh, to catch up here. He sees the Nexus going down on the side of Razin. This, this little containment here is going to be brutal to try and break out of. Yeah, and one thing also, the Reavers are really bad at shooting down ramps, and Raz is so confident, he's just going to come up here and snipe the Reaver. Wow, Raz, those balls of steel right now, and oh, that was amazing. Like, I can't believe that um, JY even allowed him to do that. It was really, really great for Raz to be so decisive and just getting that kill there. Now he can just back off. All we need to do is just not lose too many units on the exit here, and he's going to be in a great position going forward. Has his expansion coming, just needs to trade log, and use the bridge to his advantage now. Try and isolate one Dragoon at a time as JY. JY tries to search for it. So far, though, JY doing a great job of moving between shots. Not a single Dragoon is bugged out. He's doing manual move commands right now. He's being very careful with his keyboard inputs to make sure none of these Dragoons bug out. He's also going to be retreating one of the low HP Dragoons and force Raz into the most cost inefficient trade possible. Might just barely lose that Dragoon, though. Does lose that Dragoon in the end eventually, but great trade there for JY. Great trade, but the Nexus is down for Raz, and he's got a Reaver back at home. He's got the, the Dragoons pumping here. I mean, can JY come across and try to even this out? He killed a lot of Dragoons there. He's got the unit advantage. He will have a Reaver here soon with the shuttle already out. He could end up juggling and killing off. Can I get the view on this? Okay, there we go. He might be able to kill off the Reaver. There's only a second Reaver coming. With the Reaver and shuttle, you can juggle the Reaver and not allow uh, your Reaver to take any damage. And he could pick this off. It's all going to come down to the micro, though. Can JY come across the map and deal some damage right now? He's got the, even the speed shuttle with the zealot inside as well. This is going to be close. The, the observer does spot the speed shuttle, so I mean, Raz is about as prepared as he can be, but he has just reacting. He's keeping his units, controlling the bridges, and he's just going to let his probes maybe just die to this drop now. 
I, I, this might be a little bit mis misunderstanding from Raz. Maybe you didn't see the shuttle with the observer, but he's gonna maybe lose some probes here. Does actually pull them at a really nice timing, and with the dudded um, scarab, he's not gonna lose anything here. So so far so good. But now they're drilled back to the mine. If 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 Jay was just a little bit quicker with his reaver, he could have killed some probes there. But now coming into the front, will snipe off one of these reavers of Raz that's currently has no way of being shuttled around. So it's currently really exposed, and just slugging it right now. And here comes Jay yet again into natural expansion. Will be a big connection on these probes. Two probes going down for a very cost-efficient use of that shuttle, keeping Raz pinned down now and giving him no hope of really coming out and getting a positional advantage on those bridges anytime soon. So JY has total control over the map right now, and the Raz doesn't even have much vision going on. Probe's going to be transferred to the natural here for JY. He's actually got a pretty decent probe advantage, six probes. He didn't kill that many. I think he killed just two, but... Or, you know, Raz may be cutting a bunch of probes to, in order to get out more army in order to defend himself here against this counter push. Going to be a little bit behind in that overall economy. And JY pushing forward here with confidence. He's got two Reavers now in this shuttle. And there is a two Reaver shuttle for... Or there's a one Reaver in the shuttle for uh, Raz. But no speed shuttle here. Oh, diving on top of the Reavers. The Reavers getting some amazing shots, though. Can he pick up and back up? He does. Keeping one of the Reavers alive. Going to get one more shot? No. Not going to get that shot. And he is going to pick up his own Reaver. Ooh, Ooh man. Losing both wow. Reavers and not really getting the greatest trade with the Dragoons either. Raz really showing superior Dragoon uh, Reaver control in this fight. And throughout yeah, this like game, really... I really feel like JY just threw away any advantage he had, and Raz is now kind of back in the driver's seat again. JY was in a phenomenal position until he kind of botched that attack there. And uh, now Raz is going to come in here and really start to punish uh, JY. There's only just three Dragoons here and a Reaver and a Shuttle. And if Raz gets on top of these Reavers, it's going to be really unfortunate uh, news for JY. He's not going to be able to recover. He does lose one of his own. Oh, beautiful Scarab connections from JY, though. Great connections on the Dragoons of Raz. Really getting great Scarab hits on the, the forces of Raz and just clearing him up so efficiently. It's 58 supply to 73. And JY's got so many more pros behind this. So now he's back, back in the game. I think Raz just really made a tactical error here. I don't know why he um, managed to botch that so much. I feel like he should have spread his Dragoons out a little bit better and been a little bit more tactical there. He was way too cocky of how he came in and tried to engage that. Yeah, the the shots from the Reaver were kind of insane during that fight. Bashing up like four Dragoons with one shot. Pretty rough there for Raz. He was really trying to get hits from the Reaver onto the opponent's Reavers and actually managed to get one Scarab off on the Reavers of JY, but now JY flying around with the speed shuttle, looking for some damage here. It looks like Raz going to try and come in as well, but there are Dragoons everywhere here. Can he get a big shot with this Reaver? Uh -oh. The probes are being pulled, but they're going to get hit. There's a nice hit from that Reaver, and one more shot does go down. Pretty decent probe connections, and actually evened out the probe count very nicely. Reaver's going to fly into the main here, though. Th that might not be the case for much longer. A lot of probes in the main. Gonna go for some big shots here. Gets a few probes there. And a Dragoon here. But not the big hits that he was hoping for, I think. And he might end up losing the shuttle now. Yeah, the uh, unfortunate loss of the shuttle after that fight. Pretty brutal. Only managing to take down maybe four to six probes. And a couple of Dragoons. For two Reavers and a shuttle. That's probably not worth it here for JY. I would have loved to see him kind of fly out after getting that initial shot. Yeah, if there was some kind of like analyzer, like they could do in chess, they've got like chess engines where you see the bar go up and down relative to like what their win percentage is. You just see this game just like ping pong back and forth. Like both players have kind of gained leans, leads, thrown away leads, like secured more of a lead then lost it all again. And it's kind of just crazy. Like this is kind of PVP though, right? It's it's not quite like Zerg versus Zerg, which is like a, a monk, you know, two monkeys in a phone booth, like having a knife fight, like other people have described it as, but it's his own kettle of fish. I don't know how you would describe PVP as a mirror matchup, but Sometimes it's like you wait, you wait six minutes for anything to happen, and then you realize you've picked the wrong thing, or or you like it's like ten minutes into the game, and neither player can even figure out if they're winning or not, and it's just like they're they're making tactical errors over and over again because they can't quite figure out who's even winning. Yeah, it's uh, I, I can't even think of a great analogy for P PvP is besides poker in the early game, the mid game is very swingy. There's so many different things that can go wrong. Reaver shots are insanely damaging, of course. The 
storms as well can absolutely change a fight now coming across these bridges here but with superior numbers raz gonna easily be able to break that gonna run up here try to gun down the shuttle the shuttle is so low he gets the shuttle but the reavers are gonna get a fantastic shots off he does need to juggle his own reavers now oh does take a big scarab hit there but looks like he's gonna pick off some of the reaver he gets one of the reavers and actually jy pushing forward here raz jumping on the shuttle is not really gonna pay off for him yeah, he's doing, a, he's doing a great job of the trades as JY and also ahead of the curve. He's got his third base already finished. Raz not even started this Nexus as natural third. Only just now building that as we see. It's really a big bad news bear situation here for Raz going forward. Everything is in a bit of a deficit here. We're inferior army, we're inferior tech, we're inferior economy. And now JY can just pro transfer all these probes to his third base. Meanwhile, uh, Raz himself hasn't got that luxury. He's still mining on these two bases, but they're about to become mined out on the same time uh, so there's one thing that is going for Raz is that there'll be a slightly better mineral smoothing for a, sh a short window here, but that will eventually e eat him alive because he'll only have one base worth of economy to uh, um, JY's like 1.5. So right now everything is looking really great for JY. Raz is getting in here with an observer. He sees all the probes being transferred over here to that fresh third base and he does not want to let that stand. He's going to come across the map with his dragoons and two reavers in the shuttle let's see what he can do here there's quite a lot of army kind of sitting at the natural right now for jy he's got two reavers of his own and some archons and everything here but he's got to bring it to the front to take this fight wow it's going to be such a tight location for raz to try and push down with two reavers i don't know if he can make it work maybe if he can pick off the reaver oh my god he gets two shots Onto that first wow. Reaver, picks that off. This could actually swing this fight pretty significantly. He might lose the shuttle as well. He loses the shuttle. Now the Reavers can fire on the Reaver of JY, and JY is going to lose that. Reinforcements coming in wow. from behind as well. Raz is going to take this fight handily and maybe shove JY back off of this third base. Oh my god, it's been, it's happened again. The ping pong effect throwing the game back into Raz's favor and Raz just might win off of this. He's gonna be able to kill a ton of probes here. That was so many probes in this third base. A lot of them are gonna end up going down. GG, oh my GG. gosh. Just like that. Raz, Raz just dazzling JY and the viewers at home with his plays, man. I'm really impressed with the way he can just find a small window of advantage and just really abuse it like that. He's He made some tactical errors in this game, but he also showed a lot of class. Yeah, uh, JY, really unfortunate. He had such a good position there coming into that last fight. You know, almost seemed insurmountable for Raz to try and push down that ramp, but... You know, letting his first reaver or his reavers take those two scarab shots right off the bat. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't allow that to happen in a fight like this. A death match here between the Protoss. You need those Red reavers. Red. You need that you need that weapon in your arsenal in order to take those big fights. And yeah, rough, really, really rough here for JY. Yeah, Raz just had way better target firing like the entire game. True, true, and Maybe it would have been better for JY to kind of sit back a little bit, let Raz come down the ramp more and really clump up for the, the Reaver shots. But instead he was trying to mm. hike up the ramp with his Reavers. And sometimes Reavers just, they don't like to shoot Scarabs going up a ramp. It's kind of yeah. crazy. It's yeah, kind of insane. Sure. And they just yeah, kind of right, wandered right, forward right way, way farther forward than they needed to be and ended up getting picked off here at the bottom. That's uh that's a heartbreaker for JY. He'll go down to the losers match. And uh yeah, we're going to go into the winners now. That's going to be Boa, I guess, versus Raz. Another PVP coming right up. Love to have an audience for this. And we'll try to grow that audience over time. Get more people involved with this. We're going to put some of the best matches from today on the YouTube channel. Try to promote this as much as we can. We love to see People like Artosis, people like Mooney, like putting on a tournament for just the North American players. We want to see it all around the world, though, as well. And, uh, yeah, just happy to be here, man. Just really happy to, to have tournaments like this. And we're jumping into this match. We've got 
JY over here in the top left and change those colors. It's a little hard to see that sort of like radical blue color. Navy blue. We've got Raz here down in the bottom left. So will we see a two gate or a one gate uh, from both players? I think one gate from both players here. I think both players are going to be very aware of this map. Played a lot of games on this map, right? It's not like a Citadel where it's kind of a newer map mm -hmm. in the map pool. This has been around for a while, so both players should be very comfortable here. And that usually is basically what is going through your mind. I mean, unless you're really thinking aggressively, you're making the two gate to just simplify the game for yourself. Because going, if you go one gate and they go two gate and you don't know the map very well, you can just kind of get absolutely steamrolled and it doesn't feel good. Looks like both players are not going to go for that. Going to go ahead instead. Grab their gases. And you can just see a little bit of mineral optimization difference here between Raz and JY. Look at how much quicker he's got his gas down. Got a little bit more minerals in the bank as well. Everything finishing up just slightly faster for Raz. The sign of a really strong player is their ability to mineral optimize. You have to you have to really yeah. study it. It's not just something that comes naturally. Now Raz is boosting uh, this uh, patch for a second from the bottom, I think, manually. He, or at least he was boosting it manually quite some time. Like, he's, he's done a good job with his minerals. Yeah, you see this pro? It's, it's, it's good. He's doing really good mineral optimization in this game. Look at that. Definitely boosting that one. There's a lot of different strategies here to help uh, optimize your minerals. This is this is pylon right here actually help as well? Um, I think straight. it's supposed to for Protoss. I'm not entirely sure. It, it, I think for Protoss it does help slightly. I think it just keeps it vertical so it doesn't... Uh, but you can do it manually. You don't need the pylon. You just no. have to manually click the probe over an extra pixel. It's just it makes it automatic, I think. Maybe. I've got the probes here in the main checking everything out as the uh, zealots give chase. Nothing out of the ordinary here thus far. Both pylons are in full view for both players. And we're just going to wait on this Dragoon to pick off the uh, probe and reveal the tank here. Once that probe is gone. Raz going to stay in the main for a little bit longer than JY. JY just bailing out immediately to keep his probe alive. So yeah. potential here that Raz might be able to see something a little extra or, or at least force the tech to be delayed and he actually throws down a citadel immediately after that probe has been removed going for the citadel here wow this probe is staying alive for a long time finally getting taken out we should see a robo there it is robo coming down well the main thing about keeping that probe alive for so long is you want to confirm this third pylon as well because you don't want to risk of like say a proxy pylon and a proxy robo just outside your base somewhere as well so mm. you want to make sure that third pylon's inside their main base there's no risk of any proxy tech as well right there's the templar archives it's gonna be dt dt coming here against the robo play one gate robo i think that uh jy should be okay here the only thing is that if if the observer gets sent straight across the map immediately things could fall apart here for jy but if he sends the first observer to the natural and waits for a second observer he should be absolutely fine here yeah i mean it would be interesting though some some protoss players just want a, a, a vision advantage just they'll just send that observer straight across the map and if the timing's a bit unfavorable for him that might be a little bit of an issue if he only makes uh, one observer. He should make two right away, but he might not. Yeah, it's going to make an observatory here, but it's going to be follow up three gate. Three gate follow up here for Raz. So he's going to pop out a couple of DTs and then just follow up with a huge amount of dragoons. And one thing about DTs, they are fantastic at slipping in and killing a lot of pros. They also have very high DPS. If you're not yeah, careful, they can they can kill your dragoons really really fast in a fight. Yeah, those warp blades do 40 damage a hit, so they will chunk through the HP of those goons really quickly. So we might just see Raz go for this DT play, and even if it doesn't get in and deal a lot of damage, he might follow that up with just a huge dragoon swell, 
and a ton. Oh, wow. Two more. He's going to make four DTs here. That's wild. He's, he's, he's going to play like how they used to play back in the day. Um, that's how like yellow used to die in PvZ a lot. Some 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 Protoss players were kind of fancy. They'd make, they'd make the Dark Templars more as like a DPS unit to help chew through the army really quickly in one go. So using them more as like a battle DT rather than like a sneaky DT. But we'll also for the time being be able to sneak them around to this 12 o'clock position and maybe try and sneak in. We try to sneak in here. The Observer is in the front, but I don't think it's fully covering this portion of the entrance. There we go. He does move it into position now. And hopefully he's not going to lose these DTs right off the bat. He's going to try to run by. He the, sees that the uh, Dragons have vision there and pulls back immediately. That was really great. Keeping his DT on high HP here. He's going to bring together this entire army. How is this going to work? Four DTs, a bunch of Dragoons versus the Dragoon and Observer army here for JY. How's this going to go? DTs running in right now. Going to kill that. Zealot very, very quickly. Some good micro backwards here, but the DT gets on top. Deals some extra damage. Reaver just now popping out here. He's going to back away. One DT does fall. Going to go after some probes here. A lot of probes going to go down in the natural. Not pulling away those probes right now. Instead, focusing on getting the Reaver up to the front here. Getting some good shots off with that Reaver. It looks like he's going to hold, but he's lost quite a few of these probes. Trying to kill off these DTs on the retreat. Can he actually get it? is going to deal some damage to this Reaver now. The reinforcement wave of Dragoons is going to pick off that Reaver. Reaver being lost here is huge. Two Dragoons are super, super low. And actually, Rez might just barely break this natural. Well, that's absolutely crazy control from Rez there. These two, there's two Dragoons still on low HP, so if he finds them, he's not targeting them, though. And instead, JY is going to come out quickly and punish Rez and get a lot of compensation for that previous bad trade. Currently, though... And JY still managed to maintain a worker lead despite losing so many probes. Six worker advantage for JY and the natural expansion only just now finishing for Raz. He's not been able to produce two workers at a time until just this moment. So meanwhile, JY was producing two probes at a time and now has a huge economic lead to show for it. Yeah, I mean, great response from JY uh, to that kind of wild 4DT attack to the front. Getting up the ramp and just giving minimal surface area to the DTs while the Reaver's popping out. Fantastic. Coming down immediately, clearing everything out. I mean, losing the probes was sad, but as you said, he does have a worker lead after all of that. And he's got the tech advantage as well. Uh, it's going to be some time before we can get that Templar tech out with the storm. So until that happens, full and tech advantage here for JY. Yeah, I mean, and the issue is, is with this tech advantage, you can't really leverage uh, your Dragoon count anymore. So Raz can't really do anything with his Dragoons. He has to kind of just sit here and try and ke play catch up. And that doesn't really favor him in the, the longer this game goes on. And JY knows that. And he's throwing down a forge right now. He's going to go into grade soon and really start to get more and more cost efficiency going for him the longer this game progresses. Uh, getting those grades online. Where is that forge anyway? Uh, it's underneath the it. panel on the top left. It's underneath the panel uh, on the top got left. Got it, got it. There it is. And he's got the plus one cranking along here. Did he just... Did he just cancel it? I think he just cancelled plus one. Hmm. Look at that. It's going through uh, JY's mind no, no, right no, now. You know, he, he, he only just finished the forge. Oh. I thought he started it. No? No, no, he only just finished oh, I'm the forge. Crazy. I'm crazy. We're going to put on some cannons down here cannon in the main being as careful as possible really a, a little bit of an abundance of caution here from jy where raz is cutting corners right now to try to get back into this yeah i mean there might be an interesting time where jy decides to be a bit greedy and take a third base and raz can punish this but jy also might not do that too he might just sit on these two bases for quite some time and just be really confident that he's in a, a very commanding position here he's made these cannons to be extra safe against his dt so he can move out so now there's no punish here he's gonna lose a few of these um probes to this one dt raz is being a good trying to do a good job of sneaking this dt he is gonna get out of the range of that cannon and he might be able to sneak in a little bit of a body block from that dragoon to slow it down coming in there but now that this other cannon in the main base, we won't be able to find too much damage here. The Juju Goon's helping. We'll be able to snipe that up if it does come in too close. So, so far, a really good hold here from JY. Not taking too much damage, and the work count is more or less even. Coming forward here, JY might throw his, his army into this uh, kind of choked up position. It's really great for the 
the reaver play right now but he's got to be very very careful not to uh lose these reavers quickly that's a huge amount of dragoons from raz honestly his spread is very very good too and the shuttle is not right on top of the reaver he does get a great pickup here but coming through this choked up position is very Ooh. rough right now for jy he's taking a much worse trade uh based on just the 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 surface area here from raz that's gonna win him this fight alone and now he can actually put the pressure back onto jy here chasing him down running after this shuttle trying to pick off that trying to get some more damage on that shuttle as it's heading back home that was uh that was uh, kind of a throw there i gotta say jy had the tech advantage and he's kind of thrown away his his advantages here even coming out with the dragoons and fighting losing a bunch of dragoons here on the retreat now not having the reaver there to fight what is he paying attention to right now that's got his attention that's not allowing him to bring these reavers oh he doesn't have a reaver that's right he lost that last reaver i thought he had one more left in there but he did lose the reaver he's gonna pop out a couple more here and try to get that advantage back but a third base gonna come down for raz now at six o'clock yeah, I think what happened there was basically he blocked his own units at the ramp. It's kind of a dead zone for unit pathing. On Retro, you really have to be on top of your units and really babysit them, especially in these areas of the map where the bridge is, because they really start to clump up and kind of glitch out a lot. And most of the Dragoons weren't even fighting for the majority of that engagement as it transpired. So, yeah, a little bit of an unfortunate situation for a JY here, kind of throwing away the kind of lead that he had. He is trying to get in here with an, a, a Reaver and a Shuttle, but a good spot of pylon at 9 o'clock going to be shutting down that potential. That's rough. Yeah, this fight here was brutal. Raz just having the great concave there. Stopping a lot of those drag goons from firing. Looks like JY is going to try and take his own Nexus. He is still in a pretty decent spot. He's actually ahead in supply here. He's only got a small worker deficit. But we're going to get Templar out now. What I was talking about earlier with JY being in the lead with tech. Uh, for a certain amount of time until we get that Templar out. Well, that time has come. Templar are now on the field. And now it's Raz who's going to have the uh, tech advantage. He's going to be able to take better fights. And we've already seen what he can uh, can do with, you know, a worse, like a, a lower tech threshold. How What's he going to be able to do with more, better tech? Oh my god. Big hits here in the natural. Reaver dropping out here getting some huge huge scarab connections killed off about seven probes there it looks like bringing jy back into the lead now in terms of that number of probes and he's even gonna get this uh this dragoon make things really really hard for raz and raz just gonna go for an all-in counter attack it looks like oh my god he's gonna lose this i think this shuttle here is gonna get targeted down he's forgotten about it completely he's gonna drop the reaver actually and continue the fight Back at home, he's just holding on for as long as he can. He's got a Templar. I don't think he has Storm, though. Storm coming out from Raz. He's trying to break through this tiny little bridge area, though. is really, really brutal. Good Storms here on a lot of these Dragoons. But the surface area is way too strong for JY. And his Reavers are still holding over here at the Natural. So denying that mining here for Raz and holding off this attack. I think that JYJ... Or J, JY... What did I say, JYJ? He's taking a much better <laughs> trade here. Somebody in the comments or somebody in the chat was talking about JYJ and the JY. And so it kind of threw me off there. Oh my God, these uh, Reavers. Look at how stacked up they are. Looks like Ooh. we lost the shuttle. But there it National is. National Geographic. GG. <laughs> National Geographic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. He cracked me up, Shin. He takes them down. Good fight fighting bank here from jy i thought he was actually going to get broken since he didn't have any reavers here and we had the storm advantage for raz but this is such a dirty choke right here this bridge yeah. is crushing both players i mean the attack that came through from jy got smashed and the attack same attack really coming here from raz just with different tech still not able to break the defender's advantage yeah Pressure. Pressure can get to yeah. you. Big time. Well, pressure seems to have gotten to Jimin in that last game, but hopefully he can pull himself together here. Spawning in the top left. 
He's chosen the map Dark Origin as the follow-up the two-player map. This does afford you the ability to get your Overlord into your opponent's main. Like, 100%, you will know what, what their build is uh, at that timing when the Overlord does reach across the map. Yeah, so I'm wondering if now he'll go for Overpool, Gas, Two Hatchery, Lings on the Ramp, Fast Mutilus timing. Or, yeah, I'm curious. We'll see. He's, uh... Probably not going to have Striker going 9 pool again, don't you think? I think Striker will probably go for maybe an over pool timing or maybe a 12 hatch. We'll yeah. see. It's a little hard yeah, to pull off I mean, 12 hatch on a two base or a two player map, but. Yeah, I would say 12 pool is probably more likely, but I think both players are going to go for an over pool oh, or a 9 pool. 9 pool. Again. Both players 9 pool. Both players 9 pool. Look at that. All right, nine pool yeah, versus so. nine pool. It's really going to come down to the Ling control here in this early game. The first engagement with the Lings is going to be super, super important here. We'll also, see. Jimin might nine pool Lair and Striker might nine pool Speed here. That's po that, that is possible. See what players go for here. If you do nine pool Lair and you just keep your Lings on the top of the ramp, that could give you a pretty big advantage. You're going to have right you know the you you don't actually need to go for ling speed in that case so you'll be a hundred gas ahead and your spiral will be faster you have an extra mutalisk over your opponent and that can just win you the game in these tight situations but let's see what either player decides to go for as we reach that hundred gas we're gonna find out here let's see Double speed. Both players going for speed and at exactly the same time. Mirrored builds here. It's all going to come down to control 100%. Yeah, we got two chimps in the phone booth, but they both got knives and the exact same knife and the same brand and it's got the exact same sharpness to it. It's just a matter of how they can utilize the weapon in such a tiny confined space. We have to find out as both overlords are in full awareness of the Lynx location right now. So they're aware of the timings, they're aware of the positions. It's now going to come down purely to micro and decision making. Ooh, not taking the best early trade here. Pulling back his Lings is Jimin. Jimin looking for a better trade across the bridges. Striker not going to give it to him just yet. He's just going to wait here with a concave on his side, waiting for his speed to kick in. Both players might try to make a move as speed finishes so that they can try to take an advantage. But they're not going to know that... Uh, you know, yeah, he's trying to go for it. Okay, never mind. Pulling back. Here's the speed coming in. This is what Striker thinks is his time to attack, but this might be an overwhelming number of links here. He is closer to the rally point. Pretty good surface area for Jimin. Jimin taking the better of this trade. Striker having to pull back after losing a good majority of his links. Falling back across the map here. This could be the advantage that Jimin needs to take this game. He's sending one Ling around, but there are Lings popping out for Jimin who that could actually catch this. Is he going to stop that? He's going to get back onto the ramp. Ramp being held here by Striker. Ramp being held by Jimin as well on his side of the map against the single Ling. Single Ling does manage to get in here, but does get picked off as well. So nothing left on the map for Striker. Jimin going to send all his Lings across the map. I don't think he can break up here, but look at that. Striker's build just a little bit more on point here he has the spire already on the way whereas the layer is just finishing now for jim and jimmy got one more drone here slipped out an extra drone so will he be able to utilize that to his advantage or is the earlier spire gonna end up working better for striker we'll see yeah, another big issue is that there's actually more links for Striker than um, Jimin here. So Striker could do some two on one action and try and break down this ramp and force some links out of Jimin as well. And mm. that'll really hurt his meter timing even more. Right. Could definitely try for something like that. The extra drone. He's built two extra drones here. He might actually need a, uh, a Sunken back at home. Sunken so that he, he doesn't hurt his Mutalist timing too much. We're gonna take a really good fight here at the bottom of that. That was a fantastic fight for Jimin. There's only three Lings left, and there's actually five Lings here for Jimin. So, it, you know, this wow. what we thought was gonna be maybe Striker busting out on the map with a bunch of Lings. It's actually Jimin who's still holding that advantage. Yeah, it's actually really good um, play here from a, a Striker to manage to, to 
to totem with such few lings, but now, oh, sorry, Jim and totem with such few lings, and now he can come into the main base with these extra lings and put the pressure on. And the muta timing is so slow that now we can get one or two drones here. And it's really great pickup for Jim and pulling him down now to seven drones. So all that little small advantage that we had earlier for Striker just gone out the window. All that lost mining time as well has really set him back. And now Jim is going to be in a commanding position, and maybe even his game to lose as we see another two lings ready to stab, and it's going to force Striker to stay on his side of the map with these mutas. And not even come out and hunt down overlords yeah he can't leave the base right now if jimin smells that these mutilists have been gone for even a second he can run up in here kill a couple more drones and that will just be lights out for striker he's barely surviving right now as it is barely able to keep mutilist production going once he hits this 25 supply mark he's probably not going to be able to afford an overlord it's going to be really really rough here for striker so jimin gonna grab his natural he's looking to be in prime position to win this game with three drone advantage and the natural coming down he's gonna have larva advantage he's gonna have a uh, ling advantage every advantage is gonna be going to uh jim in here unfortunately he does let go of those two links he sends them in to try and get some damage uh, without seeing the mutilus on the field he comes in and loses those so now he doesn't have the potential of the backstab here anymore and Striker can just go ahead and keep on pumping out Muta. He's going to make Ling, and I think he's just going to go for the kill here. If he can't overwhelm Jimin in the next few moments, he's going to be in a really bad spot. He's hitting that supply cap. He can't really afford to produce anything right now. He's going to make one last pair of Ling. He's going to attack with just the, just the units he's got and uh, with this one pair of Ling and try to win the game right now, I think. Yeah, he's not even making an overlord. Yeah. He doesn't have the larva to do so. Yeah, um, well, now one thing I'd like to point out is that even though Striker only has four drones mining minerals, because of the mineral optimization, it's just barely keeping up with what he needs. Usually it's like five drones to keep up total uh, mutant production, but he's able to do it with four because of the mineral optimization. Even going to be doing a little creep trick here to squeeze out just an extra supply of a Scourge to try and get a little power spike that maybe he can somehow overpower Jimin just barely now as he comes in. Has some links to kind of scout ahead before uh, coming in the mutas. Getting a nice little patrol shot on there and also one of the Scourge. The guns get one connection on there so it gives both of the Scourge. There's really good trade here for Striker going forward. I'm not sure who's quite coming out ahead. I think that he's getting it. Well, he's Scourge coming in. He could turn the tide and now Jimin a little bit of a retreat and the zoning of the Scourge even though Jimin sniped those Scourge doesn't matter. The shots were still superior. Now some Scourge coming out from Jimin. Just be trying to hold on to his air superiority but that's quickly losing it two meters in the main gonna be target down by striker i think striker's just barely done it as he now comes into the main base gonna be target down there's still five meters so we can one shot these drones as well so right now losing all of his drones as jimin and these two meters are gonna get shut down in quick order striker's just barely by the skin of his teeth clutched this game sam oh no this is so bad jimin just barely not able to win this game he had all the advantages in the world here but the engagement was so so terrible all the scourge connected just about on the mutilus here in the natural had he just baited just kited those scourge around a little bit even if he had lost some drones he still would have been in an okay position with more units popping out than what striker had but he took that fight he got annihilated there i think we were actually even in an advantage of the number of of muta for jimin but Man, that is a heartbreaking loss here for Jim, and he's going to go down to the losers match. Definitely could have taken this game home. He played a great ZVZ, but not there with the Mutalus control, unfortunately. And Striker going to move on to the winners match. <clears throat> Doodle versus Exit. We're not going to be reading the chat during the games, guys, but we'll get back to you in between. So here we are, the choice from Exit. His decision for his map pick going to be Apocalypse. And we've talked a little bit about this. Uh, some of the Terran players are choosing this uh, map, actually, which is a little surprising to me. It can be pretty hard to, it, to play on a non-standard map as Terran versus Brodos, but... Maybe this is just the best in the pool. This is the this is the uh, the best one. I mean, the pool is pretty rough right yeah. now for Terran. So maybe Apocalypse is just the best of a bunch of bad decisions, but bad choices. Oh. 
I think it offers the wi most widest range of play to Terran, that's why. For example, mm. Vulture Drop is really strong on this map, and I think just having more options to you as a Terran player keeps the Paralysis more in check and like not able to get away with as much as they might usually be able to. There's also always the option of like a big three base timing attack on this map. It can be pretty easy to grab that third base, not too difficult anyway. And then once you've got the three base powering up to like a 2-1 timing, just coming across the map, you know, taking over these plateau areas. And once you get the plateau right outside the Protoss base, things get a lot easier for the Terran. If you can push out, you come out here, you take this third, maybe you need to build a bunch of supply depots or something. You really control this area with most of your army here in the middle. Get this third, move up to 2-1 and push up onto this plateau. Once you've got that plateau, you push across and you hold this area. It's very hard for Protoss to get another base operational with a lot of gateways. It can be possible for them to get this, but there's a lot of opportunities to fly out with drop ships, get over there, prevent that from happening, do run bys, that sort of thing. Try to get uh, vultures down here to deny a another rally point from the Protoss, but that all relies on us getting through this early game here and what Doodle has in store might just be able to shut down Exit from ever getting to that position. Yeah, no early Zealot either, so can't come in here and slow down this factory timing at the very least. We'll be playing super standard as Doodle. And no gas deal to frustrate Exit as well. Exit is not the strongest of mental players, so getting gas stolen and things like that is going to frustrate him more than the average Terran. So that's going to be thankful for him going forward. He would be worried. He would be worried about a gas deal on a map like this. Three-player map is much more likely to be gas stolen. So, yeah, he's going to be happy about that going forward. That everything is going to be on curve how he wants it. Everything he's going to prepare is going to be able to be able to transpire un, 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 unhindered here, and that will give him a lot more confidence going forward at least. But someone like Doodles, like, I think the superior player in both his decision making and his execution in this matchup. So I still worry for Exit, even though so far so good. So far, so good here, but Command Center going to come up without the bunker. He's actually going to wait on high ground here, try to deal some damage to this goon, and Doodle going to walk right into that, see what kind of damage he can get done. Staying on top of the high ground here, not pursuing, but now Doodle going to rotate around. He's going to get onto the high ground himself, and maybe he can catch some of these Marines here. Maybe get a kill. Looks like just going to back away, chase the Marines over here towards the natural, the bunker. We'll be finishing up here shortly. Exit going to be safe inside there. And it looks like Doodle just going to put on that pressure with the uh, range coming online. Going to take that Protoss tax. Start to pick off yeah. some uh, chip away at the, the damage at the front here and uh, force out that repair bill. Yeah, and now Exit going to be trying to sneak into the main base with that SCV. A little bit of a body block attempt here from Duda, but not going to get it. The SCV will make its way into the main base. See that range on the way and going to be finishing up momentarily. It's way too late to cancel it at this stage in the game, so we can be very sure that is a range upgrade that's going to be committed to. It's a robo going up back there that he didn't get eyes on, though, so that's one thing he hasn't confirmed. But uh, it shouldn't make too much of an impact in this game going forward, but he doesn't have an exact idea of what tech Doodle's picked for sure yet. Tank is already out here at the front with only two Dragoons on the field. I don't think you're actually going to be able to force out that repair bill in this situation. He's going to have the tank just kind of microing back and forth. It takes four volleys for the two Dragoons to actually kill that tank. So really not much of a chance for Doodle to do any poking damage here or try to pick off any tanks. And now with two, you really can't deal any damage anymore doodles kind of given up that early damage in order to get this robot robo out a little bit faster and we'll see what he can get done with that will he be dropping reaver i think it's very very likely there is the robotic support bay now there there are options to just go straight up uh, for observer and just a ton of goons but i think the reaver play is a little bit more solid and he's definitely shown some Good proclivity for that play 
Yeah, I think two gate ops into a reaver is really good and popular as long as you've got the execution to pull it off. And if you do have like quite exceptional micro, it's so strong in not only harassing the Terran player and forcing them to dot their I's and cross their T's back at their base with their anti reaver harass defense, but also the fact that you can slow down these pushes so much. But we see Exit being a little bit sneaky coming around this northern threshold on the low ground here, trying to see if he can get behind the Dragoon formation of Doodle to punish him. He's going to get right up in the back here. Oh my goodness, Exit. Where is he going right now? He's going all the way f into the natural. What are we doing? Okay, sees the tank. Looks like he's going to run right over here to the third. He's cut off his own retreat, though. If the Dragoons surround him and get on top of this high ground, he's going to get completely wrecked. Oh, oh no. Exit. Oh Making my. a really poor choice here. Going down onto this low ground. He's going to get completely surrounded and absolutely wiped out. Losing three of his tanks for just one Dragoon kill. That was about as bad as it gets. That's about as bad as yeah, it ever gets. Yeah, he was slow in producing as well. He had a lot of money just banked up there. He's only just now starting to throw down factories and start to spend that money. So he's definitely tilted and frustrated at this present time. It definitely wasn't supposed to happen. He was trying to be way too sneaky for his own good there and uh, kind of came back to bite him. I'm not too sure if that was wise at all. I kind of like the idea of him getting a positional advantage and maybe sniping a Dragoon uh, from coming from the Northern Threshold before Doodle could come out with his other Dragoons from the Rally Point. But yeah, I don't know. Just to try and slow down the third and risk three tanks is just a bit unnecessary. I really thought he was going to attack from the North and just surprise Doodle's uh, Dragoons sitting here on the high ground. But yeah, Me coming too. down here made no sense at all. And then coming back up the ramp, getting completely surrounded is brutal. This is this is a terrible situation for Exit now. What can he do to sort of bail water out of the sinking ship at this point? He's got to do something kind of crazy in order to, you know, bring himself back in this game, I feel. Yeah, he's got up to four factories. He could add more. He could throw down an armory, but I don't know. It's, it's going to be rough. He has got 47 workers to only 40 of Doodle, so he has got a worker lead actually in this game. So if he can just try not to get too frustrated in this game and don't get too emotional about the fact that he threw away those tanks or basically nothing there is still a way of navigating his way in this game it's just he has to make sure he doesn't take any damage here because even though he's got a work lead right now he doesn't have a lot of workers to defend so now dude can come in and be annoying with this shuttle harass with the speed upgrade and start to shave off the economy advantage that exit or just managed to secure himself oh no he found a way in Exit not reacting. He's not pulling his SCVs. He finally pulls his SCVs, but oh, a big oh. shot there. Killing a bunch of workers. Going to get some more here on the return volley. Getting another vulture. Bringing some tanks back now finally to start to deal with this, but more SCVs are going to go down. Not fully defending here with the turrets. Leaving a big wide open spot here in the middle. The turret on the right, turret on the left. This is huge, huge space for the Reaver to come through. Getting into the back. Brutal, brutal damage. You even need to cover over here too because the Reaver can fly around and into your main. So multiple large holes in the defense for exit. The follow-up here, what you said earlier, he needs to not take damage. That's our, The damage has already been done and now we've got that worker advantage here. Exit going to try to push forward. Imagine if he had three more tanks with this. He could easily take this base. And look at that. Upgrade for the Reaver damage as well. Doodle taking a page out of Snow's book going for Reaver damage in this matchup right now. He, that's just how ahead he is at this point. He's feeling so, so good. He's also so confident in the fact that he'll get the shots off with those Reavers. So getting the upgrade makes sense if you're feeling that confident in your ability to control it. It does take one mine hit to a few of those goons, soften up their shields a little bit. But it's not too bad. We've got only tanks here to defend. So if he rushes in with those Dragoons and Reavers, he could even break this if he wants to. Going to try and break it right now. Going to take a big shot on these two tanks. Getting two tanks already. Going to take another big shot here. Picking off a few more tanks and just reducing that tank count at all at this point is brutal for Exit. Exit just not going to be able to move forward at all at this point. He is completely on the back foot, completely locked into his base. He's going to try and get some damage with some harassing vultures here, but great little wall in here from Doodle with some cannons to defend. I think that's the most difficult part about dealing with Protoss is that as they get more and more ahead, they're able to afford more and more cannons at every single base, and it becomes harder and harder to get any sort of harassment damage on them. They're just defended up everywhere. 
that you try to poke in. Yeah, I think Protoss is one of the, the better snowball races. Once you can get ahead, it can be very easy to get more ahead uh, just because of how versatile they are and with the ways they can spend their resources and the options available to them in terms of their tech path. And these Reavers are getting so much value in shutting down any kind of map control. That Exit could seize to feel safe enough to take this third early. And now it's already 11 minutes and he's only just now starting to think about that. Fifth Factory going online as well. He has got these double upgrades going to try and catch up in this game. Eventually, maybe he's thinking of a super late 3-3 situation where he's got a 200-200 army of 3-3 upgrades. And maybe somehow he can come back, but right now it's looking pretty bad. A really beat up SCV here. I'm going to be trying to take this third base. Running out the tanks. The wall of tanks is pretty darn good right now, but the wall of vultures is lacking. Really don't have a lot of support for these units and the vultures that were out on the field. They're going to be forced all the way back home. Really important that actually Exit gets a vulture down here to the bottom left. We want to make sure that we yeah. can defend this area for as long as possible. These vultures over here, they've managed to put mines over in this base. But really, that base is not our main concern. It's about getting this online. Uh, that's really going to be the problem late game as Terran and... The more damage we take in the early game, the later we're going to have to drag this out as Terran in order to take a win eventually. Yeah, I mean, Doodle can do so much to win right now. He's going to take a fourth base. He's going to come out there, clear out the mines at this base down here, and then take that as his fourth. And X is not going to have any timing to... to I guess he could go for a 2-2 timing push. There is a possibility here, but I don't think it would be successful, nor should he go for it. I think he's going to play super late game and go all the way into 3-3 from there and just play purely defensive and hope that Doodle makes some errors, which then give him a trigger timing to go. Well, that means that he's just going to have to be more and more careful about letting Doodle take this bottom left. Like I was saying, if you're going to go and wait for a 3-3 timing... If Doodle, by the time you have 3-3, has this entire base filled with Gateway, even your 3-3 timing is not going to be enough to win a, a late game against that sort of uh, a spread out Protoss army with plenty of rally points coming around the map. They're just going to spam out units from the bottom left and surround your army as you push. So, Exit, so far he's managed to block that, but I think Doodle is getting ready to take that base down the bottom left now. He's clearing out mines. He's making sure he's got Dragoon with uh, Observer clearing out this area. He doesn't manage to catch this Vulture, which actually could be big. If he sends a drone down here... Okay, he is going to catch that now, finally. Sending one Dragoon over here. He does get rid of that. That is a big moment. But more Vultures going to be sent out on the map. Maybe to catch probes here. Maybe to just mine up this area and make sure that a probe can't make its way down to the bottom left. We see something going into the main base of exit right now. The big poor man's recall. Four shuttles just unloading a huge train of setups. There's Reavers in there, maybe even some High Templars too. He did make a round of eight High Templars. That's having to lift the CC and evacuate. A lot of damage being done in the main base of exit right now. Desperately trying to get back in here with some vultures and tanks to resecure. But so many units are falling in the defense right now and getting maximum value out of such a small amount of units and maximum efficiency for Doodle going for 191 supply to 140. And this is meaning that exit is losing the opportunity that he has of coming out onto the map and attacking which makes a doodle even more safer and taking more bases more gateways and just ramping up his production and kind of guaranteeing the win in the coming phases of the game yeah he's gonna continue to back up here over and over again getting as much damage as he possibly can he's gonna probably force the lift off of the starport and the science facility as these units come up looks like he will be able to clear exit will clear this but he's not doing it very efficiently the reavers are getting so much damage finally picking that off but losing you know even more tanks even more goliaths to this now he's got to reset up a bunch of turrets here a bunch of mines to make sure that this does not happen again and now there's templar on mass being sent out here by doodle he has nothing to worry about on the map so he's just gonna mass up huge templar and now coming in here to the third base location can he actually break through this this might be a mistake from doodle that is such a well defended spot here for exit Oh my god, everything just getting wiped right now. Doodle filtering into a kill zone here. Damn, Exit wow. actually trading amazingly efficiently there against the mass shuttle play of Doodle.
I mean, that's an opportunity to go. He should just go right now. He's actually like roughly even on supply. Yeah, he needs to unseach and just go. And it's going to come down to execution. But there's a window here for him to just come in here and just wipe out Doodle. If he can somehow snipe some of these high Templars as well with the Vultures, like that's going to be a big win, a big, big availability for him to come out onto the map and actually turn the tides finally. But it's a very tight window. He needs to go. He needs to go now. And it needs to be really a tight execution of a push. He needs to scan ahead, see where the Protoss army is, make sure he doesn't make any tactical errors, and just keep gaining ground and try and use the if he can this high ground um a little uh, plateau here to try and work against doodle if he does come out into the, the center and fight doodle head on he can still win the fight but be slightly less efficient i would like to see him actually just siege up on this plateau here siege up on the plateau and take the fourth base i don't think he can take this fight oh boy a lot of zealots running up here there's a lot of vultures as well we didn't have the mines ready and the storms are going to be excellent on the left hand side Oh, man, this fight is getting pretty close down to the wire right now. A lot of the Zealots have been uh, cleaned up, and actually, he does hold here. I don't think there was any other way. If he tried to push up and actually attack in the middle, I think he would have gotten wiped there. Spreading the tanks and holding the plateau, I think, was his only choice, his only option right now. And just keep maintaining control over this bottom left. As long as Doodle doesn't get that location taken over, I think he can still bust this out in a long long game if he just keeps on cranking out these upgrades and pumping out units here to hold this area he is falling behind overall in that supply now though and doodle's gonna come up with another big force does he have the rallies here does doodle or does exit have the rallies he has to change his rally point up to this position he can't be sitting here with two or three tanks in the rally point while his high ground gets broken it's not going to work out well for him he's actually doing a counter attack right now with vultures slowing down this base at least but really he needs to get everything together here to hold this position I mean, yeah, at this present time, he needs to maintain position on his high ground. He lost his window to do a counterattack earlier on. Although the supplies are still closed in, so there is still like only a 20 supply army advantage for Doodle, which is actually uh, not too too much of a hurdle to overcome. Terrain. Getting a good good catch on these uh, probes transferring to the fourth base as well. He could get in more for his uh, trouble, but instead it's going the wrong way and going to be running into the Dragoons. If he'd gone north, he would have got even more. He's going to scan ahead and see that the probes are still there, so he is trying to gun for it, but uh, not able to get as many connections as you want. Oh, Doodle actually could retry transfer back to there and gonna lose a few extra probes because of the running back to the ahead of the time so now taking more and more economic damage because of that little mistake and he saw the vultures coming back up and didn't get these cells into body blocks and now x actually evening out the work account and taking a small lead here so that's a really big find for him he really did a great job there with those vultures unfortunately not having any vultures left over down here in the bottom left maybe doodle can take this now He's gonna transfer the probes finally over here to this uh fifth base and exit setting up his rally point now i think he's reset his rallies up here to this high ground he needs to take this base now it's time for a fourth we can't delay any longer we need to get the tanks up here onto this ridge so we can hold this area mines down here cc on the low ground we have to make this happen right here right now doodle already in position this is bad doodle is here already and there's really not much hope for him to be able to take that base now if doodle is uh, ready to break him there no, uh, yeah, it's, it's really tough for him exit because he needs to like both attack and defend at the same time. And the only way to do that is to take this base in the top right, which leaves him way too exposed on the left flank. So there's no real easy option for exit here in terms of where to expand to. It's very ex abusable. He's going to come in here to the rally point, kill all of his high templars, and run into the natural. There's only one cannon here, and with the vultures with upgrades, can actually kill cannons and probes pretty quickly. So he's not really worried about that cannon anymore. So he can also come into the main base, but there's not that many probes in here. So we instead will want to try and like maybe mine up the gateways a little bit. But he's not going to find anything else for his trouble yeah he's going to be able to kill off this cannon all the probes here in the main not too bad i mean you're limiting the gas that's going to be coming in for the protoss at least a little bit um i mean he's cleared out a lot here he's going to get some mines on top of this he's going to clear some zealots as they're popping out this is good damage for exit but again he needs to get this base online he has to move forward here and continue to grow we cannot just be sitting here stagnant we're at 172 supply. We're almost matching the Protoss here. We have to take a great trade, and we need to take a base. Otherwise, things are going to get hectic here. Doodle, I mean, th this is a winnable game right now for Exit. I hate to say it because I don't want to jinx it, but this is totally winnable. 
It is, but I feel like he's really hesitant in his his army, his army control, and that's why he hasn't been more aggressive in this game. He's just he just wants to Doodle to make a mistake and attack into him. I don't think Doodle's going to make that mistake unless he comes down this ramp here. So it's going to be a little game of chicken here because he didn't take this expansion. He's instead just going to rely on maxing out just one time, but not have the infrastructure or economy to really support him remaxing. So. Exit's just going to go all the way up to 200, 200 supply, and now finally think about moving out. Does sniper an observer with a scan there, limiting the vision and adva advantage of uh, decision making for Doodle by seeing what's going on ahead of time. It's going to come down here with some Dragoons and clean out all the mines that are being laid down here. Eventually going to start expanding and setting up another rally point potentially is Doodle now that he's starting to become mined out some of these other bases. I'm scared for Exit here, man. He's got so much units, it's so hard to not let these things clump. And we've got a lot of storm here, I think, ready yeah. uh, for Doodle. I don't see any actually in these these uh, shuttles, but okay, maybe just Zealot, pure Zealot. That would be a shock to me if it was just only Zealot in these. He could actually take a really good fight here. Let's see what Exit decides to do. Where is he going to go? He's going to push straight over across to try and take the plateau away from Doodle. Here we go. Huge amount of Zealot's going to be dropped out of these shuttles. Not really a good... Uh, uh, targeting onto the shuttles here. He's actually targeting down. Oh my gosh, some big mine connections there. He's targeting down some observers in this fight. And he takes a pretty decent trade here, actually. Just pure rallies of vultures is what Exit needs now to come up and reinforce this army because 10 zealots are on the way. He's not got a whole lot of vultures behind this so he really needs those vulture rallies to come through he's only producing one right now and three tanks unfortunately not having the storm might actually be what breaks doodle here he didn't have storm during that entire fight now he's bringing up the storm here but he doesn't have the zealots to help that out and he's sniping a lot of these templar before they can even cast their storm now comes the zealots out here to the front he's gonna cast these storms on top of a lot of these tanks limit the number and then overwhelm here as he can with the Zealots. Oh man, Doodle. Oh, no. Gonna break through here. Exit losing everything. This is um, a rough exit. loss, man. And Exit drying up on minerals as well now. So not really able to make many units now. Just one base worth of economy to Doodle's four. So gonna be real tough for him to stabilize in this game. Even though the supplies look okay for him right now, that's gonna change real soon as more and more money comes pouring in for Doodle, but just drips and drabs here for Exit as he's running on fumes. Yeah, he's running on fumes. He's gonna be able to take, I think, this fourth, but imagine if he had taken this fourth earlier with the number of tanks he had, he might've been able to force Doodle into an attack that would've been unfavorable to him. The way it is now, he's going to siege up. Oh my god, look at this clump of tanks. What are we doing here? We're going to have a storm on this, I think. Or if Doodle's paying attention, going to send a shuttle over here and just start dropping stuff on top of that. We'll just be able to clear out so many tanks if he does so. This is brutal to even see this. You, don't, you do not want to see this low HP tanks all stacked up on top of each other. Gonna run forward here, try to snipe a couple of Templar. He does manage to get those Templar. Great pickups here for Exit, but he can't do anything in the bottom left. Look at all the cannons down here. So frustrating to deal with a Protoss at this level with this many cannons, with this many bases online. You can afford so much defense. You're not gonna be able to do anything with Vulture at this point. Yeah, like, even though we don't see a big army advantage for Duda right now, he's got all these cannons set up, so it shuts down any counterplay. And even if there was some kind of big, huge push from Exit, those cannons would also slow down the tanks, how long it takes for like, the tanks to kill expansions. He has to siege, unsiege, re-siege, and it just takes Exit so much APM to even kill a base at this stage in the game. And without having a big army advantage or uh, like advantage of like, these great timings, there's not really a timing for him to exploit. So it's just going to be a split the map position uh, and try and hopefully claw his way back to a maxed out situation again where we can start to fight once more it's nice to see exit has three machine shops at this point but it's time to start pumping out huge amounts of vessels here vessel is fantastic for defending against uh storm drops drops and storms on your tanks the d matrix just clears that out very well emp can be very helpful as well oh my god big storm drop gonna come through here but none of the storm gets out you might be able to draw this mine into some of these scvs but for now no damage here from this attack. Looks like the mine going to get pulled. Oh, does deal some damage there, but I think that uh, X is going to be fine with that. Managing managing to stop this first drop, really, really important. He's going to keep this mining online here. Just need to replace that turret. Keep defending this area. 
And he should be able to max out once again. Yeah, if he had manually unloaded the Templar before the Zealot, he would have gotten maybe like 10 to 20 SCVs of a couple of Storms. Instead, the Zealot came out first because of the, the move command unload. And he's going to come in again, though, with some Zealots. And I think there might be a high Templar in here somewhere. I'm sure there is. There's one. He's going to start. Oh, he doesn't get the Storm on the first one, though. Does get the second one off, but didn't kill as many SCVs as he'd hoped. Beautiful reaction from Exit, quickly shutting down the majority of that harass. Didn't lose too many SCVs, though. I think he's going to lose a bunch more, though. Look at this doodle oh, no. just waiting with two in the shuttle. The moment that Exit's not paying attention when he's moving his vultures or something. Doodle going to come back in and wipe out this SCV line, I think. Coming in right now with the vultures. Trying to deal some damage here. He's trying to set up potentially this base over here. That's like his future. But here it comes. Doodle going to get this storm drop off. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of SCVs. He waited for the drill to the bottom as well, so he would storm more efficiently. That's really dirty from uh, Doodle there. He did a really inefficient storm to bait out a drill for a more efficient storm follow-up, so he'd kill all the SCVs with one. That's crazy. 20 SCV kills. And that shuttle is still there. We need to see a Goliath sent down here to deal with this. There's that SCV transfer sending a bunch of them over. He's only got 28 remaining. Any more damage to this uh, economy now from Terran is going to be fatal. 100%. Drop down here in the bottom left. I really like this from Exit. Getting down here and potentially killing this Nexus is really, really good for him. But sieging up right next to the Nexus, I don't think yeah, that's, 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 that's a little bit questionable here. We can't actually hit that. <laughs> It's suboptimal to siege up next to Nexus just to kill two probes, I think. I think leaving them uh, unseaged is probably the better option there. Looks like he's going to come back, pick up his tanks here before they can get picked off. Bail out of this position. Oh, okay. He is paying attention. Here comes a big attack in the middle. He's not sieged up. Oh, no. Too much uh, emphasis being put on all of the drop down in the bottom left-hand corner. The storm annihilating that Terran army. Oh, my God. What a play there. Wow, you can't get much better value for your storms than that. So much true damage. Another storm drop at the fourth base as well. Just eating away at the Terran economy more and more. Now down to 23 SCVs to 42. There is a little ha a counter attack with these two tanks have shuffled back down over here. Starting to hit this base. Nice little, nice little effort from um, Exit here to try and even things out. But not going to be able to get too much though. Still for 38 workers here for Doodle. So he's doing all he can to stay in this game, but he's losing so much of his economy to these storm drops. I just don't see how he can overcome this, these odds at the moment. Not just economy, but man, that was so many tanks that just got taken down. Imagine it, if he had had those spread and sieged during that attack, things would have been so much better here at this point for exit maybe he could have put on some sort of attack with killing all those probes in the bottom left he given him giving himself like a little bit of a chance we only got 40 uh probes right now for doodle it's not like he's got 70 and five bases mining he's only got uh 40 probes and really only three bases left mining right now so there was like a hope for exit, but he's lost this huge army. He's going to push through the middle of the map with just 96 supply. How is he going to be able to fight the 160 here of Doodle? I just don't see it happening. He's sieging up, really stacking his army. He tries to target down as many of the Templar as he can, but the storms just annihilate everything in the Zealot follow-up. Just cannot be stopped. Exit is running on fumes here. He's got almost no money left. Dragging the mines into the tanks. This is it. GG. Well played. Yeah. Doodle takes this series away. Still casting. That's right, Jinjin. Still going, buddy. You know it. Having a good time here. Enjoying ourselves. Looks like Mist gave us a raid with 35 viewers. Thank you so much, Mist. Really appreciate you, man. I guess you got your uh, your Twitch channel back. Hope it's going well. We're uh, keeping so the chatting. alerts off. We're keeping the alerts off for now in the chat in the background so that we um, can focus on these games. But they've been pretty good so far. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. A little chat between Exit and uh, Jim right at the start there. Exit said, egg good. And Jimin said, agree. 
using that egg to bounce those moveless grenades did prove a little bit annoying breaks at the handle yeah Maybe he did end up losing mental game did end up losing a few marines to that and look at that nine hatch from yep. jimin oh boy nine hatch oh strong boy. oh boy oh boy it's gonna be a lot of lane coming out of him i think right he's going for the uh the yeah. larva advantage here well, how will he follow this up? Oh, well, to be fair though, he's probably also expecting an eight racks, and he didn't go for the eight racks. He's just going for like a very standard wall in here. So who knows? Maybe exit. As long as he can keep his head together, maybe he can hold this off. But it's still like going to be frustrating. I mean, he's going to be so many links for him to contest with, and with the marines popping out on the outside of the wall rather than on the inside, this makes it much more effective. Right. He doesn't have the ability to put. I think if you place the. But barracks just one hex lower you can put your supply depot above and this makes it a tight wall but he can't do that here which could be a problem maybe he puts his second supply depot there and it's just like a tiny tiny little hole maybe that would be better he just needs this he needs the scv here in the front along yeah he's gonna put it there this is, this is a very tight little hole to try mm. and sneak through with ling what so do you know what's also interesting about the 9 hatchery? Because it's a two-player map, it also takes away the opportunity to block a 12 hatchery. So he's like negating the issues of like going for a 12 hatch and getting like eBay blocked or something. So it's mm. kind of sneaky as well. He's like really taking control of the early game state and like reducing the possible range of play from exit. And he's been able to get the Overlord over here in time to see that there's no 8, uh, eight racks coming. So he just makes pure drone one set of lings and then everything else into drones so actually this is this is looking very good i i actually like this build from jim and it's interesting yeah it's basically like saying i have the opportunity to kill you if you like do something crazy or and i can counter you if you do something aggressive or i can like uh, transition and just play a nice standard game and i've made sure you can't block my 12 hatchery with an eBay or something yeah really well played here and jimin gonna take a nice little advantage it looks like lots of drones popping out here as the uh, layer on the way, I'm not sure how the layer timing and the uh, spire timing works out with nine hatchery. I haven't done a lot of nine hatchery, but it seems it seems strong. It seems like he's getting things out pretty darn quick. He's gonna put down a sunken colony here. A lot of players who are like uh, I, I remember actually Zealot back in the day used to put a sunken colony every single game. It just deals with a lot of the annoyance in the early game that Terran players can put out and allows you to just hit your build absolutely perfectly uh, behind it, as long as you factor in that sunken colony being there as part of your build. Yeah, I think one thing we should we should say is that back in the day, like say on Lost Temple, nine hatch was actually the standard, like we didn't have 12 hatch. Nine hatch was the way to play ZVT. So this is basically like the old way of playing come back in the modern way. And I'm kind of excited to see it. Yeah, it's interesting. Having this making a resurgence here. Time history history is cyclical, isn't it, Shun? Yeah, Just going it is, around it in is. a circle. Oh, look at that! Exit going Time's right into a fac factory here. He does have an armory or a academy on the way. It's going to be getting an armory as well. So this is going to be a very quick uh, Valkyrie, Valkyrie play. Yeah, really, really <laughs> fast Valkyrie. Uh, probably about the same time as when the Mutilus arrives, the Valkyrie's going to be just behind that. So as long as he's got the correct number of turrets here, he shouldn't take too much damage from this first attack from Jimin. It, it is a very technical hold, though. You can just barely squeeze out your turrets and everything. So if they do come in with like one or two pairs of Scourge, they can just snipe the first two Valkyries, and it's a nightmare hold for the Terran they haven't got as many turrets available to them. It's a very tight build order. It's a very technical very hard to get every to afford everything like, like you see now he's wanting to build like lots of barracks first he's trying to squeeze out everything he can and Terran is a race where you're basically just spending your money when you can when you can't afford things so he's trying as desperately hard as to squeeze out as much but he's very flimsy in doing this so if he doesn't start his um turret soon he might have a little bit of a difficulty holding this because jimin's gonna be prepared he's gonna be making like a pair of scourge like we see now in advance so he can just get in here and snipe this valkyrie as it pops yeah, he does have a pair of Scourge on <laughs> coming here. This is not something you actually get if you're not aware of the potential for Valkyrie or for um yeah, that Valkyrie to pop out. If you think that it's just pure Marines holding on, 
you want to dump everything into your um, mutilus production so he's definitely aware of this i'm gonna get in and kill the one turret before it can finish the zoning turret here is gonna go down once again exit twice in a row buddy letting this yeah. zoning turret go down and he didn't build the bunker over here either i really expected him to build the bunker here rather than over he here should. it does not defend these uh two supply depots at all oh to, to be fair, actually, there's a good reason why he didn't. It's because he's worried about Ling counterattacks, killing his turrets and his mineral line. But mm. it's still, it's like, still, he should be doing a better job of trying to protect the zoning turret no matter what. Yeah. Well, we're going to lose both these supply depots. That's really painful. The Queen's Nest starting right as Flyer Carapace hits about halfway. That's the timing that you need to get out Guardian. So it is going to be a Guardian play here with the third gas coming online pretty shortly. I'm gonna hit a very nice timing here. Jimin has not been harassed at all. He has not been slowed down. He's able to hit his build perfectly, and he's done some serious damage to Exit, who has his supply depots on the way now, but was a little bit so slow in following this up. Coming in, he gets the Valkyrie as well. The Valkyrie going down is huge. The first two, Scourge managing to snipe that. Absolutely massive. Exit not utilizing the patrol micro it's very hard to do especially in these tense situations but you have to be able to pull away that uh, valkyrie it cannot move once it starts to fire if you don't uh, master that uh, micro yeah and jimmy knows the timing of his other valkyrie as well so he's going to come in here take a few swipes at these marines and just dance around by the starport and see if he can find a pocket where he can get on top of the starport just as the valkyrie comes out Exit's doing a good job of keeping his marines in the square formation here with this one medic trying to ward them away trying to keep them at a screen so he can't just come in and snipe his valkyrie for free it's just about to pop out in the moment now here it comes but so jimmy wants to try and get on top of this as time as he can but the marines are doing a good job of zoning out doesn't able to get the connections on those scourge though snipes that valkyrie the only way to win there was to exit the target down those scourge manually but didn't able to find that and now Jimmy will be rotating around trying to make sure these mutants don't die because he's only wanting to morph these into guardians. He can have a very strong timing around about 10 minutes. He can start morphing like about 8 to 10 guardians all at once and have probably just following up to protect the mutants against the Valkyries that he's going to be building still. Yeah, we're going to try and hit this like 9 minute, 9 minute 30 timing and so far everything has gone absolutely perfectly to plan here for Jimin. No uh, Scourge here to fight this Valkyrie, but with just a few swipes, he could end up taking that out regardless. There it is. He gets one last swipe on that. Getting rid of all the Valkyries right now is super, super good because the Guardians are just going to be that much more powerful coming up here very, very soon. He's going to be morphing those. There's the Greater Spire on the way. Hydralis Den is done. Hydra upgrades are going to come up here. If you guys haven't seen it before, the Hydralis Guardian play is incredibly strong and incredibly hard to defend against. We haven't seen Jimin pull out his low HP mutas. I'd love to see him do that because he's got a lot of... Oh, actually, he did pull out two. So actually pulling out a few of his high HP... Or high low HP mutas to mix them in with some high HP ones. Sending a lot of <laughs> overlords across the map right now. He is going to be hitting this timing and we do not have like even Cloak Wraith or anything like that. He's actually switching into some uh play with the uh with the vessel here and i mean vessels are not going to be out in time we're gonna have so many guardians here shortly he does he's not aware of the guardian switch i don't think you're going to go click you can only go cloaked wraith when you know it's already coming he's doing such a good job of mowing down the bio ball he's got such an overwhelming force of music he can just win the game having to morph guardians at this stage it's absolutely crazy he's got loads of gas bank time he can make at least six guardians soon as well there's no pressure on him to end the game anytime soon he's just going to sit out here and make eight to ten guardians and then just go with an overwhelming force and the hydras will be able to screen any any chance of dealing with those guardians using air units as well god i I've played this uh, Guardian build quite a few times. I've never seen, or I've never had it uh, be the case where I could just overwhelm with pure Muta at this point in the game. You're always kind of defensively morphing the Guardians, but here he's just going to run forward it, fighting with the Mutas against these Marines. The plus one armor helping is clearing out a lot of these Mutas. Now the Guardians are going to morph and all the Marines are gone, so... I think this push should end the game. It was a nice, valiant attempt from Exit to come out and try to stop the gu Guardians of Morphing right out in front of his natural, but that time has now passed. We've got a Devourer here as well. One Devourer really going to help out in case there were some Wraiths trying to, to stop this, and he's even going to pick off the Valkyrie here with a pair of Scourge. 
exit is done though, man. There's so many guardians here. Gonna be able to break open this natural. He actually has to abandon ship right now. He needs to just lift up his CC, head to the main, try to defend whatever vessel he's gonna be popping out. He's not even making a vessel right now. So he is completely out of this. GG, exit taps GG. out. Nice crisp build here from Jimin to win this one. And he's gonna advance to the final match, the decider match. All right. Here we go. Jimin versus Doodle. Starting here on a retro. That's correct, isn't it? Let me make sure we are going on yep. retro for the decider match. Yes, first match is going to be on retro. A Jimin here in the bottom left. Doodle in the top right. And Doodle, he's already been tested here in a pvz had that match versus striker didn't go so well what kind of changes is he gonna make here against jimin and what kind of well, style I, does jimin like to do in uh in zvp he's got a wide range of play he sometimes does two hatch muter into four hatch hydra he sometimes does just two hatch hydra if you go gateway first there's, there's lots of ways he likes to play this so he's got lots of different cheesy ways to play it if he wants to he's also good at going straight into late game Right, all the way up to Hive, 9 hatch reproduction. So I think we might see some interesting tactics here. But I, th I think mainly Doodle will try some kind of like two-base cheese, maybe in four-gate uh, timing. Yeah. Hmm. Well, seems like like I expect Jimin to do some sort of Hydralis bus, but I wonder if um, that's what Doodle's going to be expecting here too. We are going to have that vertical natural. So things are looking pretty good for that. It is also that forge first. So 973 is going to be a possibility, and it's going to be very strong on this map. Nice hiding of the drone, keeping that out of the vision of Doodle. He's going to be able to get his hatch on time here. So that's yeah, the main least, thing. Is, yeah, go ahead. Well, the main thing is hiding this second, this overlord, so that the Doodle has to go into the main base and assume that maybe it's still nine pool. So this allows him to sneak that drone out and do that. Because if he did see the overlord, he'd know it was a over pool into expansion so that he would uh, stay in the natural and block the hatchery going down. I think this is an overreaction from Doodle. What do you think? We can we can get the Nexus here. We see that it's a an overpool. We could go Nexus and then Cannon. And yeah, he's gonna cancel one of the cannons, so at least realizing that this is this is all that's necessary here. Really what what would have been better is just Nexus Cannon. But uh it's still gonna, you know, get to the same place, just a little bit less uh, economy behind that. He faked himself out. He misread it and thought it was nine pool because he didn't identify the pool timing. Like he just misread the game and like didn't click on the pool and look at the HP enough to realize mm. that it was over pool, not nine pool. Because he didn't see the right. second overlord. He panicked a little bit. Got to know the the timings there. Really important to uh, be able to just look at the clock and say, "Well, oh, that's a that's an over pool. That's a nine pool." Depending on the the timing of when that's going to finish. And. In this case, making a little bit of a wrong assumption there, but going to be able to uh, maneuver out of this situation by setting up a second gateway here. So this is this is kind of what we were talking about, right? He's going to put out a bunch of zealots in the early game and try to overwhelm Jimin while he's transitioning into more of an economic middle game. Whereas Jimin's probably going to go two hatch muter, force a big reaction out of Doodle, maybe even double Stargate. But the real build that's probably going to come is like a four hatch Hydra bust. That will just mow him over like about eight minutes 30, around about the time that he should be getting his storm. And he just won't have it in time and Jimin will roll him over. Well, I've seen this a lot of times. I've seen this, this double gateway play. It's really strong uh, in the current meta. You're going to come out with like five zealots at a really awkward yeah. time. And... If he doesn't have enough Ling, he could get mowed over. And if he is forced to build a lot of Ling, then maybe he won't be able to, you know, get the uh, the right the right number of mutas that he actually wants to get. So let let's see let's see how this ends up panning out here. He's got quite a few Ling already. We are bringing out. Jimin's these... gonna. Mm -hmm. 
Jim is going to go up to 12 speed links anyway with this build order. So okay. this this two gateway pressure won't really accomplish a lot. So it doesn't really matter that he's going for this pressure. And then Jim is going to throw down a third base and a macro hatchery, go into Hydra's. He's going to make like five muters probably. And like, or maybe not even that, maybe like four muter one scope. Maybe yeah, but five muters ish. And then he's going to pressure with the muters and then he's going to transition into just normal uh, Hydra play after that. And then the storm will be too slow to deal with the Hydra list and he'll just get busted. He needs four cannons and storm to hold the push and he won't have it. A lot of faith here from Shun in Jimin right now, but I'm not so sure. I think we can move out right now and put on some serious pressure here as Doodle. He is going to start to move forward. He's got two cannon. He really doesn't need to worry about Ling run by right now. Though he is being super careful bringing the probes forward here, even with two cannon and keeping a zealot in the wall. I would love to see him actually send this zealot out. I think that's a lot better. Five mutas on the way. They're going to... The mutas are going to come out before the zealots arrive, and this timing is just a little bit off from Doodle. He's going to come in here. The lings are just going to back away until the mutas are out and dealing damage, and that's when they're going to have to engage. They're just going to come in and deal with this. No problem. Even setting up a wall with two sunken. I think that's actually an over an over defense he here. One. He needs one, he but I don't, I don't think he needs double sunken here. Not with the five meter i guess he wants to send the meter across okay he's just yeah, gonna send why. them he's not actually yeah, he gonna use to them for the, the defense mutas. yeah he wants to be able to be aggressive with the muters so he wants to keep two so he's gonna sacrifice this third base as well and just be more aggressive he knows doodle's like gonna be building maybe cannons in the main base but won't have anything else really so there's a chance he can come in here maybe snipe the gas probes at least there's, there's, all, there's all kinds of things that could happen here he's gonna dive on top of the cannon right now we didn't oh we have the uh, Stargate pumping out a Corsair right now, but it's going to be able to take over this bottom part of the mineral patches. Try to go after this pylon right now. Base did go down here, but there's two Sunkins in the natural. He can still take this fight, actually, with this many Zealots. It's going to be hard to hold on. He needs to build another pylon down here really soon. We cannot be losing this pylon right now. Jumping on top of these Mutas. Corsair fighting against four Mutas. Still a pretty even fight. We just are going to be forced back here. And the second Corsair, once that pops out, he's going to be able to hold on no problem. Second pylon there. Two cannons finishing up in the main. I think Doodle's held this perfectly. Yeah, but, yeah, but the real threat is the Hydra follow-up. So he's forcing Doodle to invest all of his gas into, like, Sairs and, like, another Stargate. And this is exactly what Jimin wants. He wants you to, like, dump all your gas into, like, anti muter defense. Because the real threat is going to be the Hydra follow-up where he hits you pre-storm timing. I see. Wow. This is uh, really well timed out here and thought out by Jimin. You can see. Yeah. Pumping out a lot of Hydra right now. No third base. I think that Doodle, if he just realizes his situation, build a bunch of cannon here, he should know that there's no third base. He sees it with two Zealot. And all he needs to do is just realize that. And he should be able to hold on, but he's not building more cannon right now. He's actually building double Stargate, which is exactly the opposite of what he needs right now. This is not a full exactly commitment to Mita. Yeah, there's this another... Is, this is what the build's designed to do. Oh my gosh, first Hydra just gonna run up and die? Okay, it does survive, but that's a little bit that's a little bit sad here. He needs more cannon. Doodle gonna add more cannon right now. Three more cannon, but if only he'd had these already done, he probably would have been able to easily hold. Diving on top of the Corsair here, he kills one. Two Corsairs go down, third Corsair falls. There's still six Muta here, but it looks like the cannons in the natural will finish. That's a lot of cannon here, and oh my god, Jimin. Making big That's mistakes mistake. <laughs> right now, sending in the Hydra. And now this this two this two Stargate Corsair not looking so bad. I mean we're eventually yeah, gonna I mean, get enough to fight and push back. Maybe we can come across the maps or killing overlords. It's yeah, be scary. The, the timing of the cannons are actually pretty lined up nicely. It'll compensate for the fact that his storm is so slow. So and Jimin's range took a long time. It's nine minutes and his range doesn't finish. I don't know what happened, but his range was definitely late for some reason. So that's why we've not seen him pull the trigger and attack anytime until now. It's because his range for some reason was super late. Mm, and I don't think that really Doodle has anything to worry about except for this bust. He just needs to hold this. That's it. Hold this bust and he will be fine. He will survive this. He's almost got speed, and with speed and this many cannons, how do you ever get through here, Shun? I just don't see it happening. Well, the Zealots are going to be able to run up and bloody block so easily. 
Well, the, what he's going to do is make it look like a fake where he's just going to pick off the wall and he's just going to pull units, pull units, pull units and eventually he'll just come in and try and overwhelm the cannons because it's very easy for Protoss to like misunderstand how strong their cannons are and they die extremely quickly. So some very good manual move commanding up and up to the cannons and target firing with the Hydras, you can mow down the cannons so quickly and you're going to see at least Jim attempt to do that in a moment here. Well, he did, Doodle did get out with the uh corsair here and saw the pooling of all of this army over by his natural and realized that he needs more cannons he's gonna send the zealots forward here cannons are all firing the uh, corsairs are gonna come in they were not controlled correctly but they do kill a lot of these hydras or a lot of these mutas and the hydras trying to run forward here probes pulled brilliant play by doodle to hold this off he manages to Beautiful. save the natural with only losing one cannon gg Jimin taps out. Marvelous hold by Doodle. Hanging on and taking out this kind of crazy cheesy play we just saw from Jimin. I mean, you seem very familiar with this, Shun, but I guess that's uh, yeah. that's just standard play for you, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I'm familiar because I, I've, I've I talked to Jimin a lot in the past. He showed me a lot of stuff. I've learned these build orders from him. So I know these builds, the builders inside and out. The reason why he didn't win this game is because he lost that fourth hatchery and he was trying to make the same build work off like a little bit less gas in the tank. And the, he didn't have the opportunity to go in earlier because the range was so late. So usually the range is finished by like eight minutes at, at, the, at the latest. And he wasn't even finished at nine minute 30. Mm. So yeah, I'm able to pull the trigger for quite some time. Maybe a, so maybe a little yeah, nerves. Maybe a little nerves there. Sure. For sure.